So I thought we might start off with some introductions. Um, now, usually we have this tradition at LinkedIn about, you know, we ask folks what's not on their LinkedIn profile, but I thought we would, you know, hit, hit people with some knowledge out of, the, out of the gate. So would love to know maybe if you have picked up anything so far at the festival, like any insight or, you know, trend you're spotting or, or, or learning. Yeah. Um, so we might kick off with you, Cynthia. Okay, great. Well, um, thank you for having me um, and Greg here today. We're super excited to chat about B2B, which normally yeah. most people don't get super excited about. So, <laughs> yeah. um, well, we'll bring it today. We'll bring it today. Um, you know, I've been, this is my first time at Cannes, and so it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, Greg's a veteran, so I'm going to ask you all of your advice of where to go, <laughs> what to do. But um, I think, you know, hearing some uh, great, great panels and great information yesterday, not to be too cliche, but AI is a huge topic. Um, mm -hmm. and and what I think has been the most interesting to see is, you know, AI is a very broad term. Um, and so it's been great to see some conversations around how it impacts targeting, um, how it impacts advertising, how it impacts creativity. So yep. there are all of these different niches in which this um, has a massive opportunity to, to transform and I, I believe accelerate um, creativity. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Cool. I'm Greg. Hi, I'm uh, Greg Hahn, Chief Creative Officer, co-founder of Mischief. And yeah, I, uh, what I've learned so far is the airport's pretty far from the hotel, because I've, <laughs> I've literally just gotten in. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I have been keeping up with uh, you know, some of the conversations and what's winning and what's out there. And yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't ignore AI. That's, that is the topic du jour. Yeah. The interesting thing is, like, I haven't seen it showing up too much in the work. So I think next year is going to be super interesting. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll, yeah. You'll see that reflected, I think, in a, a number of ways we, we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, so. yeah, interesting. I like how you framed it as well around, like, it's not, you know, fundamentals of marketing versus bright, shiny object. It's like how AI is actually impacting the, the fundamentals of marketing, like targeting, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really interesting. Um, well, we've got both, you know, brand and, and agency here today. Um, so. Um, I'd love to maybe go back to the beginning of your relationship and maybe, um, Cynthia, first, what was going on inside um, Tubi at the time that kind of led you to mischief? Yeah, um, well, I've been at Tubi for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And um, we were acquired by Fox in 2020. We've seen massive, massive growth in terms of the users on our platform. We're at 64 million monthly active users. We have the largest free streaming library in the US, 50,000 times. I mean, I could go on with the numbers, but that's yeah. not what this campaign is about. <laughs> um, and the biggest challenge that I've had leading the B2B marketing team is a perceived lack of consumer awareness mm -hmm. from media buyers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So where we were indexing with middle America and people who um, you know, don't live in the major markets and coasts, um, if you're not seeing it, you're not going to believe it. Mm. And so we hired the brilliant Nicole Parlapiano in August, um, and her first charge was World Cup on demand and Super Bowl. Amazing. And you've got a big B2B problem. <laughs> yes, yes. So she came in and very, very quickly said, we are bringing mischief mm -hmm. into the fold. Um, she had worked with you guys yeah. in her previous lives at Tinder. Um, and... I think that not only from a creative perspective, but the strategy team that you guys have just crushed it. And so really this campaign, the B2B campaign that we're talking about today came after the Super Bowl, but it was because of that that mm -hmm. there was a real tipping point in our business. Yep. And that's why we didn't follow suit with a campaign about stats. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. wanted to keep uh, the brand very first and foremost uh, because that's what's resonating. Love that. Yeah. Uh, what about from, from your perspective, Greg? So, uh, very similar answers. Mm -hmm. So much of this is about awareness. I remember yeah. like, I was out visiting Tubi right after the Super Bowl, and one of the salespeople mentioned like before the Super Bowl, like they had a really hard time getting appointments with, with media buyers. Mm -hmm. and they said the day after the Super Bowl, they could not get off the phone with them, like people are calling them. So that's a really good measure of how, even in a consumer campaign, just drawing awareness, because you know, business to business people are people. Like they see the same things we do. Mm -hmm. So they need to understand what the, what the value of the brand is so that they can deliver it to their consumers. Yep. Yeah, very interesting. Um, well, you, you both mentioned the, uh, the work, which is what we're here to talk about today. So the incredible B2B campaign and also the, the, the Super Bowl spot. Um, we'll start with the B2B campaign. That was the one that initially led to um, us talking on LinkedIn, actually. Um, I, I spotted it in the wild, the, the out of home in New York during the, the upfronts. Um, 
And it just, you know, when you see a really creative B2B campaign, it, it really stands out, especially to somebody like me. So I really appreciated that work. Um, so we might take a look at that work now, and then we'll come back and uh, talk about it. What's this? That's the spark of his billboard on Fifth Avenue. That's not the right ass. Hey, this kid is smart. I didn't do this. I didn't, I didn't run the wrong creative. He's lying. I want you to fire him. Some incredible work there, Cynthia. Um, before we get on to the creative idea specifically, what was like the, you know, the business challenge or, or the strategy behind this one? Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about the business challenge at its core just being a low uh, uh, perceived awareness mm -hmm. amongst buyers. Yep. And so, as Greg mentioned, I mean, after the Super Bowl, we got everybody's attention, all humans, including marketers. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't want to lose that momentum. So going into upfronts this year, of which we were a part of the Fox portfolio upfronts, um, we wanted to play off of some of the things that Mischief has been developing around our core brand identity. Um, and what the rabbit hole spot at Super Bowl did so, so well was articulated what we've been trying to say for so long, which is that you can go so deep on Tubi for mm -hmm. whatever you're into. And we hear from our consumers all the time that Tubi gets me or I feel so seen. Yeah. And so we thought, what a better way to market to our advertisers than to make them feel seen. Amazing. And yep. so the three short films that we made, which we did in like record time, and they're so beautiful, mm -hmm. they are fully produced pieces, um, they poke fun a little bit at some of the tropes that I was on the agency side in my first job and I ran the wrong creative. Yeah. And like, I get it, right? Yeah. And so- You're just um, confessing that now. I am just <laughs> confessing it now. I'm sorry, I can't remember what age, I, one, of the, one of the Omnicoms. But, um, but yeah, so I think we'll these, are, out, these are very real yeah. um, things that happen and then we dramatize them, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 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 I mean, uh, what, what, what we talked about earlier is just this idea of like, I feel seen is such a powerful human emotion. Mm -hmm. And to reach people that way, instead of treating them as here's your business problem and here's how we're going to solve it, it's like, let's speak to one on one versus you yeah. know, you know, a mass consumer group or, or corporate marketing group. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And is that campaign um, still currently running? And it, you know, is, is, is it planned to be in the market long term? Or how are you thinking about that? No, so we really did it centralized. And I'm glad you said you saw it in New York around Upfronts, because mm -hmm. that was obviously very strategic for us. Yeah. Um, so we really wanted to do it at a time when there is a high concentration of buyers' attention mm -hmm. um, and just traffic. Yep. Um, so the campaign is no longer running, but we've actually taken a turn from that and, and done something here at Cannes. So I mm -hmm. you know, can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, um, sure. Similarly to you know, making marketers feel seen around the time of Upfronts, yeah. there's a whole community of creative and advertising people here right now. And so yeah. we actually working with Mischief again, <laughs> yes. took that idea. We didn't make a million movies anymore, but we, we did create some really fun posters that would only happen to you at Cannes. And they're, they're on display around the palette. And I've so. seen them. They're, they're incredible, yeah. yeah. Um, you've mentioned a couple of things there. One is um, you know, marketers being seen. Um, and the second was like poking fun at, at, mm. at folks, um, which is actually a, a very nice segue into a campaign that we released um, less than two weeks ago, um, a campaign called The Place to B2B. CRM Serial is the solution your business needs to win like a champion. What about user adoption? It's crunchy. What about compatibility? Well, it's toasty. Dancing pandas don't sell CRM. Ads on LinkedIn do. LinkedIn is the place to be to be. Okay, well, I, I, I was going to say amazing, but I, I mean, that would be... <laughs> I'll say it for you. It's, it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah, 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 well done. Yeah. It's interesting, though. It's like you guys are doing a um, B2B about B2B. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes, like exactly. the inception of uh, B2B advertising. Yeah, it gets very meta after, yeah. after a while. Yeah, no, it's really fun, though. I mean, and again, it's the same approach as you've, you've um, approached your target like they're humans. Yeah. Somebody way smarter than me said that businesses don't buy things. People who work at businesses buy the things. Exactly. So, you, so you have to speak to them that way. And you guys yeah. Yeah, did a great job with that. Yeah. What about you, Cynthia? Yeah, you no, I, I agree. I did. I, yeah. I mean, I think in most of my career, I've either been on the ad tech side um, and I haven't worked. Um, this is my first big consumer brand in house that I've worked on. Yeah. And I think that uh, I've always marketed to marketers. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so it, you're used to that. It's this inception, yeah, right? Or the meta thing where. Yeah. And that's why I think it's smart. It's taking that same page of yeah. making it relatable and uh, factual about like who we actually are yeah. as people within these organizations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a really interesting one. It's like, 
it's designed to be a long-term platform for us, this idea of like LinkedIn being the, the place to be to be. Once we landed on that idea, it's like, it just opens up so many avenues now. So we also have some stuff going on at, at Cannes, some, yeah. some out of home spots. Once you land that platform, it's like all platform is like the parent of other ideas. Yeah, so exactly. Then you yeah. can do a million different things on that and it, yeah. all, it all hangs together with that same insight. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, that's what we're, we're really finding. Um, well, there's, there's one more campaign, um, you know, we talked about two very creative B2B campaigns. You also um, mentioned briefly the, the Super Bowl spot, so that was incredible. That kicked off everything I get for you this year in February. So there are two incredible uh, Super Bowl spots that we're going to take a look at right now. Welcome back to Super Bowl 57. So far, Greg, the game going like you expected? Yeah, and so far, these teams, they've really... Well, two, two amazing spots. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what was what was the idea behind you yeah. know, doing the Super Bowl I this mean, year? I mean, Nicole was on this journey with Greg, yeah. and you are probably best suited to talk about I got the benefit of this massive halo effect of <laughs> yes. being, like, involved in the early days, but I think you, you, you guys just knocked it out of the park. Yeah, there's always a lot of strategy behind the creativity, what we, you know, put out there. Yeah. So the strategy of this was obviously, you know, Tubi has a lot of content. And it's the kind of content that once you start watching something, you immediately go to watch something else, then something else, then something else. It just draws you in. So yeah. we, we came up with this idea, of, you know, I always put it in my head, it was like a buffet of rabbit holes, because yeah. you can just go in one and then another. So you just took that metaphor and, and brought it to life in the most fun way we possibly could, a way that we thought would be interesting on the Super Bowl, and yeah. kind, of, kind of odd and out there, just something attention grabbing. Yeah. And then the next spot to follow that up was the interruption thing based on the idea of like, once you discover Tubi, you kind of want to go back to it. Yes. Right, yeah, right? Yeah. So we wanted to play with the audience in the environment they were in, knowing that's a very focused audience. Like mm -hmm. a, it's a one time in the world where the entire room, the entire bar is eyes on screen. Yes. So yeah, what yeah. would happen if we disrupted that moment? Right? Yeah. So that, that's kind of what it is. And it's just really, again, bringing some awareness to Tubi. Because mm -hmm. once you find out that we're on your TV, yeah. <laughs> It's easy to look for it, but most people didn't know we were there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think, too, that the interruption spot specifically, I remember telling Nicole, you know, having been at the company for a while, I'm like, we can't do that. I don't <laughs> think it's ever going to happen. Like, I just oh, many I don't people think we're going to be that. able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. I mean, with Mischief as our strategic and creative partners and with the leadership of Nicole and the rest of the executive team, you know, they weren't afraid yeah. Um, yeah. to to push the boundary, and they weren't afraid to do it with the B two B campaigns either. Yeah. So one hundred percent, Nicole from the day one, she's like, "That one's great," and that one. And, and yeah. normally, the Super Bowl spots, I've done a few, and yeah. it is a process, mm -hmm. and you go through rounds and rounds and rounds. Yeah. And sometimes you come back to the first idea, but this was like she has such great gut instincts, and it felt right, and it worked creatively and strategically that we just zeroed in on those two ideas and, and went and made them. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. Um, so we've seen, you know, um, multiple, you know, incredible B2B spots here today already. Um, maybe, Greg, for, for you, um, what do you think are, you know, the, the, the creative or the brand elements that, that go into making a really breakthrough B2B spot? Well, it's, it's not that different than a consumer spot. Just really understanding what motivates a person mm -hmm. and try to find the human truth within that. And for B2B, you know, it's, it's slightly different in the fact that you have another layer. It's like what motivates them is what's going to motivate their consumers or what's yeah. going to fix a very specific problem for them. So that's kind of, you know, a little bit more specific than you would do with a general one. But the really important thing is treat them like humans and yeah. not like business people because no one's a business person. They're people. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, this one for, for you, Cynthia, you know, all of this, you know, this is all a moot point to a certain degree if you, if you don't get funding for, for the work. Um, and I know that's a, a big challenge for all of us. Do you have any tips for you know getting buy-in from from the CFO or, or whoever the decision maker is um, to really yeah, buy into the idea of you know creativity and, and brand building? Yeah, I mean for us, we do a lot of research um, mm -hmm. through advertiser perceptions or otherwise. We talk to our clients a lot. We run a lot of surveys. Um, and I think proving to them that the biggest barrier to entry was a lack of awareness yeah. um, and more of an emotional connection mm -hmm. and, and, and recognition of the brand 
Because once we, we see that once we get people into the funnel, once they're talking to our sales team, who are incredible, by the way, they mm -hmm. convert. Like once they see yeah. the numbers um, and, and have a conversation, they're partnering with us. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we really had research to prove that we needed to focus on the upper funnel and we needed to create more of an emotional connection and we mm -hmm. wanted to do it really creatively and it didn't hurt that our Super Bowl spot <laughs> killed it. Absolutely. So they were like, yeah. okay, you're partnering with those guys. There were charts to look at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah you've got the numbers. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, it really is about being data driven, but yeah. also being human, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I guess, yeah, seeing that, you know, Super Bowl spot in February, the call to action work in April, the work you have going on in Cannes here in June, I, I guess, the right people are bought in um, yeah. by the looks of things, which is amazing to see. Um, well, Greg, Cynthia, this has been an incredible conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank really, you. really appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everybody, for um, tuning in at home. Um, we do have a lot more content coming this week direct from the Can Lions Festival, uh, which you can find by searching LinkedIn Collective or by clicking on the link. Really hope you enjoy today's session. Thank you, and bye for now.